Hello, and welcome to Deep Soul Tarot. Welcome back if you are returning, if you've been a part of my other videos. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, today, um, I did a reading earlier, a love reading in general, um, because it's Valentine's Day. I usually do a daily read, and I call it Friday Frequencies. Um, but I've been, been feeling a calling to do this reading for a while now very strongly and I thought today's a good day to do it uh, I've wanted to do twin flame readings so I decided to go ahead and do a twin flame read um, because I, like I said I felt very strong spirit kept telling me to do this to do this to do this and I'm doing it I'm doing it today so if you are on the twin flame journey um, whether you are the divine masculine or the divine feminine this is going to be um, well, a general read, it may not resonate with all of you, but uh, to get the energies of the Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, to see if there's any mirroring going on. So I have on one side, I have a deck for the ma Masculine Energy, and uh, the masculine, the Divine Masculine, and the Divine Feminine on the right. And then I have Oracle cards also that I will pull at the end. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. And uh, But if you are in a Twin Flame journey... Uh, you know, you know which one you are, whether you're this, not gender specific now. Uh, you could be a female and feel masculine, more masculine energy within you. So uh, we have both energies within us, but we usually uh, relate more to one or the other. Um, okay, so um, let's just get started here. Um, time is an illusion and energy is fluid. So although I'm doing the reading uh, today on Valentine's Day, which is to, it is to get the, the energy of the uh, divine masculine and divine feminine at this time. But let's say, for example, that you happen to see this video somewhere down the line and you are on a twin flame journey. And just because I'd recorded this on February 14th, that doesn't mean that's when you were guided to see the message. And that is when it is most likely time for you to receive the message in your personal situation, uh, whether you are the divine masculine or divine feminine. Okay, so let's get going. Again, I have the Divine Masculine deck here, Divine Feminine deck here. Okay, Spirit, what messages do you have for us in our Twin Flame journey? With the energy of the Divine Masculine of the deck on the left, and the Divine Feminine representing, or the deck on the right representing the Divine Feminine. Or February 14th, 2020, and moving forward. Okay. I'm going to shuffle the deck. I've already pre-shuffled them, but I'm going to shuffle them again. Well, regardless of what you're doing today, um, I hope you are having a wonderful Valentine's Day. No matter what you plan to do, okay? You know, I say that Valentine's Day is about self-love. And if you, by chance, are lucky enough to have someone to share it with, that's awesome. All right, so this is the Divine Feminines. Now we'll do the Divine Masculines. Um, but, you know, and if you don't, take the day to pamper yourself. Take yourself out. Do something special for yourself. Be your own Valentine, you know? And by doing self-love... You are opening your heart, your heart chakra, to um, to new love. Opening up the energies to new love. All right, here we go. Are you all ready out there? Okay. We're going to start with the divine masculine. The general energy for the divine masculine. Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords, sorry. I was just feeling the energy here. Um, Seven of Swords. The Divine Masculine is in a state of denial right now. He's deceiving himself. He's lying to himself about something. I'm hearing that the Divine Masculine may very well be in a karmic type relationship. But I am feeling that he knows um, 
a lot of times the divine masculine is not quite aware or fully aware of the, the type of connection or twin flame connection at all. But he, I'm thinking that he knows he feels a connection with the divine feminine and he's lying to himself about it. He's trying to deny it. Okay. That's what I'm feeling with that. That is coupled with the Four of Wands. Now, the Four of Wands is the Twin Flame card. So, he's... he's, And again, I'm, I'm... I'm saying he. It's the Divine Masculine. But you could be a feminine, a female, or a male. It doesn't matter. Your, gen, your gender doesn't matter. I can't talk today. I didn't have very much coffee. <laughs> um, I have my coffee over here. Maybe I should take a couple sips. What I'm hearing here is... You see how the person is... Um, in between, I'm hearing in between two worlds, like living a double life. And here's the path. Here's the past path to the divine feminine. That's what I'm seeing right now. That's what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. Because the divine masculine, and I'm, I'm called to see this, has grown a lot since the last time you saw your divine masculine. Or since the last time he saw the divine feminine, his counterpart. I'm also hearing he's on the path to self-discovery of some sort. So being that he could very well be in a karmic relationship, this is a chance for him to develop some self-discovery. But I don't think he quite fully understands the twin flame connection here, you know, the divine masculine. So he realizes his connection with the divine feminine but tries to deny it, being that he's in a relationship, some sort of karmic relationship. But I do believe that the Divine Masculine is thinking of his Divine Feminine. And I'm seeing that he is on a path to self-discovery. And within that self-discovery is the path to union with his Twin Flame. All right. The High Priestess. Mystery. Yes, it's a mystery to the Divine Masculine. It's as if the Divine Masculine spends a lot of time alone thinking about this. Looking for answers to what to do. You see how there are three birds? Now this is the High Priestess card, but there are three birds down here. He, I do believe your Divine Masculine is in a... Um, karmic relationship is in a relationship of some sort of karmic relationship so it's kind of like a three-party situation he's involved with that person but he's thinking of his divine uh, feminine and he really needs to go inside uh, the high priestess is about intuition but it's also about mystery so he really doesn't know the divine masculine does not know what to do what to do or how to handle it I think he may be caught in his head. The person has their eyes closed. And it's almost like, I need an answer. Please, someone give me an answer. As if he's going out to the, the heavens and saying, just give me an answer. What do I do? All right. Let's see what else we have here now. Um, all right. That's the overall energy of the Divine Masculine. Let's see what other energies we have. The first set of energies. The Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is an energy of cutting something out and doing it with any regard for emotion. Um, doing it's a, it's a feminine energy, so doing what she wants to do, again, regardless of your gender, as a divine masculine. Um... There's a need to cut something out here. Maybe it's time for this karmic relationship for your Divine Masculine to end. Um, but he's in denial about that. He's in denial about that right now. He needs to have a little more self-discovery. In order to move away from that. Maybe he hasn't, he hasn't learned the lessons yet. He's still in the process of learning some lessons. So his karmic relationship isn't over yet. But he needs to cut something out. And I do believe that it's, it's coming that the um, Divine Masculine is going to exit this karmic relationship. 
in the near future. Maybe not now, but in the near future. And coupled with that is the Eight of Cups. See? Walking away. Walking away from the karmic relationship. Towards the light. Towards the light. So the person has seen the, your divine masculine. The divine masculine has seen the light and is now walking away. It's almost as if leaving the cups, the empty cups behind. And I think he's aware of this. I think he knows that there's something not right in this relationship. But he just doesn't want to exit it yet. It's about divine timing. It's not time. It's not time for the divine masculine to leave this relationship. He still has some self-discovery to do. Temperance. It's about balance. Uh, balance and patience, but it's also about self-healing. And I also feel here, I'm hearing that he needs to pay attention. I just heard something else. Pay attention to his emotions. See how the water's flowing? His emotions are flowing. And there's been an, emotion, an emotional invest, investment here, so it's hard to leave a relationship that you've invested. But I think there's the fire, the passion, and the hand. And it's funny because what I was thinking was I hear that almost like these are the thoughts, but the thoughts are being um, blown awry almost. It's just all over the place. I'm also hearing that the Divine Masculine needs some time alone to think about this. So cutting something out. And it's going to need some time to heal. Which is also part of the lesson. The emotions are going to flow though. The emotions are going to flow. So temperance is coupled with the Five of Cups. Yes, some sort of disappointment and regret. See how the person is looking back at the cups, looking back on this relationship, um, having a hard time letting go, um, to be honest, having a hard time letting go of this person. Because there is some, there is emotional involvement. The divine masculine is not aware that this is a karmic relationship. So it's difficult to step away from something like that. Not wanting to be the, the bad guy and be the one to walk away or hurt the other person, so to speak. But it's almost as if the the Divine Masculine is, is... I think the Divine Masculine is in the process of exiting this relationship. I don't think he has done it yet. But he is going to walk away. And will need time to heal himself. But he's looking back... Wait... I'm hearing that. No, there's something that made him look back, but he's still moving forward. At first, I, I thought that I heard that it's like he's looking back, thinking about the Divine Feminine. But I don't think that, I don't, I'm not feeling that. I'm feeling that this is the person, the other person, the karmic relationship. It's like, I've seen the light. One last look back. It's, it's like, I regret that I have to do this, but I have to move on. It's time. And like I said, divine timing. It's time to move forward. It's time for me to move on. And I, I don't think he's done that yet. I feel that he's still in the process. It's Valentine's Day. You don't want to break up with someone, I guess, on Valentine's Day, right? Let's get through Valentine's Day, and then at some point I can do this. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, so let's see. Another, the next set of en energies is the Knight of Pentacles. And in, and in this set of energies, I try to focus on the challenges the Divine Masculine may be going through. The, yeah, the Knight of Pentacles is a very slow-moving um, energy. So, he's moving very slow. This is a very slow process. It's like he's dragging his feet. He doesn't want to, to do this. But I think he knows he's going to have to at some point. But he's just trying to almost procrastinate. Delay it for as long as possible. But there's going to get a point where he's going to have to do that Queen of Swords energy. And just, I call the Queen of Swords, not only the Ice Queen, but ripping the Band-Aid off. You know, it's, it's time that, you know, rip that Band-Aid off. Get rid of it, so to speak. 
so the wound underneath can heal, if that makes sense. So the Knight of Pentacles is coupled with the Queen of Pentacles. Interesting, very, very slow energy. The Queen of Pentacles is a very, um, well, also a nurturing energy and loyal. Queen of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. Um, the Queen of Pentacles. So I'm hearing here that the the uh, Divine Masculine, although he's the Divine Masculine, he's trying to balance his uh, his thoughts and his emotions in this situation. He's trying to... Um, the Pentacles is about being grounded, so trying to stay grounded, not getting swept up in his emotions. The Queen is about emotions. The Knight is more about actions. But I'm hearing that the Knight of Pentacles is more about... Um, well, his thoughts and how to move forward. He's trying to figure out how to move forward. But the Knight of Pentacles is so slow. And they think about things. They want everything to be perfect. So I'm thinking that this person may even be an overthinker. And it's almost paralyzing the person where they can't move forward. So the Divine Masculine, though, is... I'm seeing in this picture, this is a female in the picture, but it, again, not gender specific. While this person is dragging his feet, the divine masculine, he's thinking of his divine feminine. You know, somebody that he feels safe and secure with. Because if you look at the picture, the Knight of Pentacles is moving towards the Queen of Pentacles. And maybe this divine feminine, you divine feminines out there, um, maybe your divine masculine knows you've been very loyal and patient with them. You know, uh, you've been nurturing to them. You haven't passed judgment. There's no animosity. And I think your divine masculine knows that. Interesting. All right. So moving forward, the last set of energies for the divine masculine, we have, um, I'm not going to say a conclusion, but almost how it ties all this together. Or maybe as your divine masculine moves forward, in his very near future, what he is going towards. Judgment. Judgment. Nice. This is nice. You see how the person in the picture is on a porpoise or a dolphin, whatever it is, flying through the air. It's like free. I'm finally free. The light. I finally saw the light. I freed myself. And this is all the people. It's a new rebirth. Cheering. These are like all the spirits. This is spirit and all the... the um guides, whatever you want to call them. They're not actually humans. They're in the spiritual realm. Yay! You finally learned the lesson. You were finally able to get through that karmic relationship, that karmic period. And now you can move forward. It's a brand new rebirth. I love this. Judgment. So good work, Divine Masculines, because um, by going through this, and like I said, I don't feel like you've done this yet, Divine Masculines, um, I feel that um, or I'm hearing, it's a process, and you're learning the lessons. You're taking the necessary steps and taking your time to learn the lessons. So when you move forward, you can move forward in a, a much better way. And hopefully towards your divine feminine. It's all good about divine timing. You don't know. Um, there may be some more karmic lessons thrown on the way, but you've made it through this, and you've you've learned a lot. I think you've done a lot of self-discovery. Beautiful. And with that is the Ten of Swords. Okay. Ten of Swords is um, hurt. Let me put this down. You've been hurt. Okay? But you're getting past this. So this this was... Um, not that this, is a, that this was a relationship that hurt you. This whole process has hurt you because... You, I mean, this, you care for this person that you, the karmic relationship. Maybe you had good times together. It's a heartbreaking experience, but it's something you had to go through in order to have that self-discovery, in order to have this newfound freedom, this new rebirth. So, but I'm hearing that you're going to heal. You're healing from this, you know. Um, I'm right here at the temperance. I was looking at temperance. And, you know, you may stop for a minute and look back and say, did I, do, did I make the right choice? 
Did I do the right thing? You may have a little bit of regret, but I'm hearing that with the temperance, you're going to have some, some healing. It's going to take time to heal, but you will do it. And the end of the swords, uh, the ten of swords, the next card is the, this is, the ten of swords is about ending. So you've been hurt. This has hurt you very badly. It's been a very, very difficult. I mean, maybe your karmic person even stabbed you in the back. That's, that's a possibility too. But what I'm hearing is it's been a very traumatic thing for you to have to go through. To have to all these, these are, in my opinion, these are thoughts. These are almost you tearing yourself up for doing this. Um, don't do that to yourself, Divine Masculine. But I do feel here with this, with the Judgment card, though, because it's almost like you're passing judgment on yourself. And that's that's not a good thing. That's that's um, self-destructive. And that's not what we're, we're, we want here. We want you to be grow from this, to get wisdom from this, to, uh, like I said, learn the karmic lesson so you can move forward and celebrate and be free and go towards, um, well, a better you, which would ultimately bring you to uh, maybe your divine feminine or um, just a rebirth, a brand new you. All right. And the bottom of the deck underneath the general energies is also the two of cups, which I didn't, I don't put up there. That's, but it was the two of cups and I'm going to set that up here. With my little heart. Um, so what I'm hearing is um, with the two of cups under there, the energy that you have the divine feminine on your mind and in your heart. And you know, if you're in a twin flame connection, you can feel the energy of the other counterpart. You can. And you never... No matter if you're in a relationship, it doesn't matter if it's years down the line, if you're married, you always feel that connection. So, um, wow. Okay. I'm trying to decide if I want to do the Divine Feminine here. Let's finish off the Divine Masculine. I'm going to do an Oracle from the Sacred Destiny Oracle deck. Don't do that first or this one. Let me see. What do I, which one do I do first? Spirits. Okay. Spirits says fairies first. Okay. We're going to do the Oracle of the Fairies. So let's get a further messages here. Like I said, we have, all have one just popped out. We all have masculine and feminine energies within us. And um, so you're a person who relates. You are the divine masculine in this relationship. But... Um, so I consider the fairy cards a little bit more emotional and the sacred destiny. I'm going to say more uh, of the logical intellectual, but it's more of a moving forward. So this is kind of like maybe internal and external, if you will. So the, the uh, fairy card is the fairy spotting card. It's time to go fairy spotting. It's said that seeing is believing, but in fact, the opposite is true. Believing is seeing. And that's, um, I believe from the book, if I can find my book, here it is. Um, and that's very... Uh, Appropriate here, Divine Masculine, because um, believing is seeing. Believe that the path that you are on is the right one. As difficult as it may have been, as hurtful as it may have been, maybe you had to hurt someone in the process, It's, it's it needed to happen. It's that time. Let's see what the book says. So believe. Believing is seeing. You believe this, and don't doubt yourself, and you will see. You will see the light. And I think that's where the growth is going to come in. That's where it's... Okay, we go. Fairy, fairy spotting. Have you... Have you ever seen a fairy? Maybe you have, but have you tried to explain it away with the voice of reason. Or perhaps you're a fully-fledged believer, or better still, a knower. You know fairies exist. Fairies can appear to us in many different ways. Being sensitive and open to experiences is helpful when fairy spotting as it allows us to be more receptive, receptive to seeing these magical spirits of nature. They very often appear as flashes of light darting around wooded areas or gardens or if you're really lucky inside your home. They can also manifest just outside your line of sight, often in the corner of your field of vision, so you're not totally sure if there's anything there at all. Sometimes they can be felt intuitively, only seen in your mind's eye. 
They may also bring a flowery scent or an unusual smell, rather like toffee apples or popcorn. When they appear in their full form, it's a true privilege, for they're rightly wary of humans. You could try photographing fairies. Even if you can't see them with your own eyes, a camera can often pick up a fairy essence, which may appear as a beam of light or a tiny orb. The best place to do this is out in nature, either in your garden or in woodland. Midsummer's Eve is a particularly good time to look for fairies. You're most likely to see a fairy if you care about nature and the environment, as they will be more willing to connect with you. And what I'm hearing in this is um, two different things. I'm hearing that you may have been getting signs or uh, synchronicities, if you will. If you're, like I said, if you're, if you're in the twin flame uh, connection and relationship, or not relationship, connection, uh, situation, um, connection, you know that 11-11 is synchronicity, synch you know, synchronizes with the twin flame connection. Um, and numbers like 211, 311, 111. Um, so you may be seeing a lot of, or, you know, 222, 333, synchronicities in that way. But you may also be hearing your divine partner's, uh, your divine feminine's name, uh, maybe songs that you used to listen to, things that remind you of your divine feminine. But believing is seeing. You have to believe within yourself, and then you will see that rebirth. This is very, very cool. And it's also saying go out in nature. So um, I'm thinking maybe you need to spend some time alone and just um, just be for a minute and listen. And within nature and the world, you will hear messages. Something will come to you. All right, let's do the Sacred Destiny Oracle and see what you Divine Masculines get with that. And then we will work on the Divine Feminine. Oh, there's only, okay, I thought there were three there. I'm like, okay, that's too many. Um, now there are three. Well, I'm going to take them because they were all together. And we have first, I saw happiness, happiness, miracles, and stand still. I'm not going to read all three of those, I don't think. But let me look in the book and see if there are points that I can give you that... Let me see. I'll read this one, the happiness, because that one came out first. Our sun is at the center of our solar system. Our planet and our lives revolve, revolve around its cycles of light and dark. Our inner and outer biological rhythms, as well as the rhythms of every animate and inert part of life, are ruled by this celestial force. In the far past, the sun has been thought of as a god. Traditionally, it has been associated with happiness, joy, hope, enlightenment, illumination, truth, cheer, warmth, and goodwill. Additionally, sunlight is an expansive force. When something is heating up by the light of the sun, it enlarges. Without the energy of the sun... Things contract. The sun carries the deepest energies of expansion in life. So to receive this card is to know that you are expanding. That's exactly what I was saying. That you're expanding. You have have you're having some sort of life lessons, some sort of epiphanies, if you will. Um, self mastery, self discovery, and within that, within this relationship, it's like you've transformed while you were in this relationship that you're in. And that happens. That happens to people. You know, maybe you're not the same person. You're not the same person you were when you first met. And it's about transforming. Oh, so it's saying, click your heels and shout for joy. The signs are with you. Let your light shine. Abounding good luck awaits you. A gateway is opening for even more joy and happiness. Your life is expanding. Opportunities are emerging. emerging. This is the time to go forward with glee. Love deeply and fully. Embrace life with open arms. Goodness is flowing to you. The only thing to be aware of is to monitor your expansion in a metered way. Too much too fast can be overwhelming. Too much too fast. That's where the Knight of Pentacles and I believe the Queen of Pentacles comes in. Because it's, um, you want to take your time. Like I said, it's about divine timing. And you're in, I think you're still in this relationship, Divine Masculine. and um, But you're moving forward to, um, well, in that, cut that out and move forward. And it's a rebirth. A rebirth. 
Oh my goodness. Okay, let me read a little bit of this one. Uh, after the storm, this is miracles, after the storm, the rainbow appears. So I'm just going to say, your storm is probably breaking up with this person, splitting with this person, your karmic relationship. No matter where we are, the instant of a rainbow splashes across the sky, we usually stop and stand in awe. Some say that rainbows are messages from the creator. Others say that they are part of the electromagnetic spectrum phenomenon. But no matter the explanation for their existence, rainbows struck awe in the hearts and souls of many through time. Many traditions believe that rainbows are blessings from the creator. A double rainbow is double the blessing. So I, I'm hearing there are storms, but through the storm, when it rains, and the rain pours down, there's always a rainbow at the end. There's always something good that comes from it. It's just not a good, you don't want to be caught in the rain, you get soaking wet or, you know, a storm. But at the end, the storm will end. And there will be a rainbow and be, um, well, miracles. I'm hearing that something's going to be in your future that's going to surprise you. The storms of the past are passing and your dreams are coming true. No matter what has happened in the past, your future holds abounding miracles. Good fortune, celestial beauty, beauty celestial beauty, and inner divinity are expanding within you. Believe that your life is guided. Trust in the goodness of the universe. A celestial bridge to the heavens is opening for you. Start a health program. Invest in your career or initiate a relationship and good fortune will manifest. Blessings are flowing in all directions. Believe that you deserve the best because you do. Bounty, joy, blessings, and miracles are flowing your way. This is beautiful energy. All right, I'm going to read this one too. I'm going to run out of time on here on my phone. did the video earlier and my phone died, so I have to be careful about that. I ran out of uh, juice and I was like, I was done with the reading, thankfully. But I was like, what happened to my phone? <laughs> That's what I record this on is my phone. A swamp is a low-lying area with woody plants. Oh, you know, I'm going to skip this. Because I don't think this is, this isn't irrelevant. I will give you the message for the card. If, if it feels that some areas of your life have slowed down or even come to a standstill, you are right. Something is not progressing. Even if it seems that things are flowing, look beneath the surface. Perhaps something is immovable. The first step is to become unstuck. The first step to becoming unstuck is to acknowledge where you are. The soul loves... I'm going to turn the page. The soul loves the truth. If you, in life, you can either say there are no weeds, there are no weeds. In other words, denial. Or you can notice the weeds and begin pulling them out. Queen of Swords. Um, notice what isn't working in your life and then take slow, steady step, <laughs> slow, steady steps, Knight of Pentacles, to unblock the barriers. In nature, when one is being sucked into mud, the worst thing to do is struggle. The best thing to do is slowly and carefully, one step at a time, extricate yourself. Wow, that's why three cards fell out, because that was a very powerful message. Um, that is, I mean, happiness and miracles is beautiful, but you're at a standstill, and that's what I feel. You're in this karmic relationship, and... Um, you have to move forward and get out of it. If something is, has, um, it's not the same as it was in the beginning, you know, and I think, you know, at some point you're going to have to exit this relationship. It's a karmic situation with lessons to learn. So, um, divine masculine, um, you are in a great forward motion here. You are, um, you're in a process of self-discovery. Don't be too hard on yourself. Take the necessary Slow and steady wins the race is the Knight of Pentacles cards. So it may take you some time, and it may take a little time to get yourself to get out of the situation uh, because it's not, I don't want to say serving you anymore, but it's not the same for you anymore. Uh, you may not be as invested as you were in the beginning, or it didn't turn the way you thought it would, or whatever the case may be. Okay? All right, let's get to the Divine Feminine. The Divine Feminine's energy, the Knight of Wands. I call that the Fast and Furious card. But the Knight of Wands, Divine Feminines, you have a lot of courage and a lot of strength. This is taking a lot of courage and strength for you. And you are moving forward. 
moving forward and um, being passionate about things in your life. You know, it's not that you don't think of your divine masculine, but you do um, things in your life that you're passionate about that make you feel good. So you've almost put the divine masculine, so to speak, on the back burner. Um, passion's still burning. The love is still there. But your focus isn't all on the divine masculine anymore, or maybe you haven't had it for a while. And coupled with that is the Ace of Pentacles. So there's a brand new beginning here. A lot of growth and a brand new beginning for you, Divine Feminines. Um, and you've grounded yourself. You may have been a little unbalanced before, but I think you've grounded yourself in a sense where you've toned down your your thoughts of the person, of your Divine Masculine, your counterpart, and maybe calmed down the, the emotions that go with it. And now you're focusing on you and what's important in your life, um, which has taken a lot of courage and strength, you know? Here's, the, here's, here's what's interesting. Here's the judgment card. The judgment card. Um, oh, that, right, right here. I was covered. I'm like, just like your divine masculine, you have, um, you've come into, you've come into your own. You had another rebirth too. You've had a lot of growth and self-discovery also. But you've been going through that process, I think, Divine Feminine. And um, there's some figures, there's a vague figures here, which I consider maybe spirit. Or you've really gone inside and listened to your inner voices, um, gotten maybe more spiritual, and focused in on some meditation that allows you to have cleared your mind. And it's a rebirth for you, too. You had an aha moment where you thought, you know, I love my Divine Masculine. I really do. But it's time to do some things for me. I have to move forward. Um, and you did. And it was a whole, a whole, this is a whole new you. It, you. You've accomplished this a little bit sooner than the Divine Masculine. I think that he's still going through this process. And that's okay, Divine Masculine, if you're, still listening or if you're there everybody has like i said divine timing everybody's process is different so don't feel like well the divine feminine got through it faster than i did what's wrong with me or whatever that's not that's not the point here and if that's what you're thinking you're missing the point in the relationship here the karmic relation is there for a reason and you had to go through it a certain period of time and i don't think you're quite at the point where you can leave that relationship and have that full rebirth but you are doing great work and great progress and are on the way so let's see what the Divine Feminine has as far as their energies. Ace of Swords. I, did, did you get that too? Maybe not. The Ace of Swords. Um, Divine Feminine. You've stepped into your truth. You've been honest with yourself. You've accepted the truth. And again, it's a whole new beginning. Um, it's almost like it's um, opened your eyes in a way. Between the Judgment card and the Ace of Swords, it's opened your eyes for a new truth, a new... Um, it's like it cleared the clouds in front of your eyes that um, maybe you were clouded with emotion. I'm going to put the clouds in the back. Yeah, um, That's not why I said that, but that's what I was feeling. Let's see what you, this energy, the Ace of Swords is coupled with, yes, Five of Wands. You had internal battles, Divine Feminine. You've been battling with yourself back and forth, maybe between emotion and thoughts. And you finally came to a truth that I need to do me. I need to do, you gather the strength and the courage to do me, focus on me, the growth and the new beginning for myself. And in time, there's a possibility that you and your divine mask and your counterpart will come into union. But um, it's really not about that, though. It's about you being the best you you can be, your divine masculine being the best uh, being that he can be, he or she, um, and in this process, you are teaching each other. You're almost balancing each other out in a way. All right, energy's four of cups, four of cups. So what I'm hearing here is um, you were in. I'm trying to hear here the energies here. Um. I'm almost 
was hearing here that the universe was offering you a cup of self-love. You know, these are other three cups. And we don't know if they're full or not. They could be empty. These may be past relationships, maybe karmic relationships, or whatever. Whatever the case may be. Empty emotions, I'm not sure. It's like the universe was offering you a cup. I mean, it could very well be another person offering you a cup. But you're just not, I'm going to say bored, but it's just you're not interested. You're just not interested in that right now. You're more about... Oh, the universe is offering you a cup of self-love. I'm I, I, sorry, I retract that because what I'm hearing is at some point you weren't interested in, in engaging with other people, maybe finding uh, another person. You were focused on your emotions and, and you were not focusing on self-love though. It's... If you focus too much on your divine counterpart, it's um, detrimental to your own well-being in a way. Because the whole process of the journey is to focus on self-love where you are, and it's a long journey, it's not saying it's easy, but where you fulfill your own needs. So your, your divine partner can't really feel your own your needs. You know, love yourself. Uh, be be okay with yourself and that will draw in your divine masculine your divine counterpart to join with you and like I said it's like you even each other out but it's like you both have come together and learned the lessons and now you can be as one it's it's you've completed the whole journey and now it's like you know you're a partner in crime let's see the energy with the oh yeah okay you have the eight of wands coupled with the four of cups is the eight of wands the eight of wands is about fast movement it can be about the communication. But what I'm hearing is that you have had conversations with yourself. You know, or spirit has, has had uh, messages trying to talk to you and tell you. You need to have self-love first. And it's fast movement, moving forward. And I think you've, you've done that. I do believe you've already done that. And that's where um, the judgment comes in. Where you have that aha, aha moment where you realize, I need to focus on myself right now. And again, it's not like you forget the divine masculine at all. It's like you carry them in your heart, but it's not the forefront of your existence. All right, let's see what we have as far as possible challenges. The High Priestess. Also, your... Uh, mirroring your divine counterpart. Not in the same position, but he also has... Divine Masculine also has the High Priestess. Use your intuition here, Divine Feminines. Use your intuition. You may be in the dark about something. You may think you see something uh, involving your Divine Masculine that's not really true. But use your intuition. That's, that I feel a very strong message. Um, yeah, okay, now here's your challenge. Heartbreak. So... Hold on, let me see here. Let me see what I get with this, because... I'm almost hearing that it's breaking your heart to not know what's going on with your Divine Masculine. To not know where this is going, but I'm going to tell you right now, Divine Feminines, the High Priestess has secrets. She knows the situation. She knows well more than we do. <laughs> Way more. And... Again, it's, I'm going to keep repeating, it's all about divine timing. The High Priestess is only going to reveal that to you when it is time. So if you ignore your intuitions, your intuition, it may cause you more heartbreak. More internal battles. Be honest with yourself. Alright, then we have the Ace of Wands for the Divine Feminine. I hear a new passionate beginning. It's like, it's not the magician, but it's like you're working your magic. I'm hearing here with the Ace of Wands that with your new beginning, the Divine Masculine can feel that you're moving forward 
and not that you've forgotten him, but he can feel that. And you're beginning the energy and the, um, well, I'm going to say passion, but the energy, it's like he can feel that. Um, that's coupled with the Nine of Cups. Okay, underneath the deck we have the King of Cups, which is emotional maturity. But and under that is the Lovers, which I find interesting. Uh, that's, the, that's, that's a twin flame connection right there in Union. Um, but I'm hearing before that can even be a possibility, you have to have both have emotional maturity. And the King of Cups can be caught in his head. You know, um, so with the Ace of Wands and the Nine of Cups, if you focus on your life and find the passion with the things in your life, see how happy the Nine of Cups, it's, it's complete um, happiness with content. Content, content to be where you are and accept that this is a, a journey that takes time and isn't going to happen overnight. All right, let's see if we can get an oracle for the fairy, for the for you, Divine Feminine. Let's see what comes up for you. Well, I only see you mirroring yourself in a couple of cards, the Judgment and the High Priestess. I think those are the only two that were um, mirrored. But with those two cards, um, you're both having a rebirth, which is beautiful. And it's a mystery to you both. I don't think you realize it. Um, so, um, here we go. It's growing that you've both done at different paces, um, but you're growing in a beautiful way here. Protection. The fairies of protection are shielding you with a magical fairy ring of love and light. Practice psychic, psychic protection before embarking upon any spiritual work. Let's see what protection has here. When we're physically open, we act as a beacon and can attract different types of energy. Some of these energies may be unwanted, so the fairies of protection remind you to use psychic protection when undertaking any kind of spiritual work or meditation and will give you their own protection too. This card is also a reminder to make sure you're spiritually grounded, which can add an extra layer of psychic protection. A simple way to do this is visualize a long tree root growing from the base of your spine and going deep down into the earth. The fairies may also might also be nudging you to protect someone else spiritually or physically, but also but also also ask permission before assisting anyone. It's important to remember that we have free will and the right to choose whether or not we'd like any spiritual help. What I'm hearing with that card, Divine Feminine, is maybe you can send out to the universe and to spirit to protect your divine masculine. You know, it's it's an unconditional love. That no matter what's going on with them, and no matter what they're they're going through, that they that the spirits and um, and the fairies protect that person, right? But if you do do any type of meditation or spiritual work, if you're into tarot, oracles, or anything to that, you know, manifesting, um, I suggest that you kind of cleanse the room and the energy to not allow any negative energies in. So kind of a purification, if you will. All right, let's get you a Sacred Destiny card here, Divine Feminine, and see what it says. Power. Can you see that? Power. Like that. This is your time. This is the time to claim your power and step into your potential. This doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be you will be without fear. Be courageous. Let the world hear your voice. Take a stand. Stand up for yourself and for others. Share your passion. Teach from the heart. Write, and your words will have great meaning. Hold your body as if you are incredibly valiant, noble, and brave. After all, you are. What I'm hearing, Divine Feminines, this is a time that you need to be brave. Um, if you do, when you do have thoughts of your Divine Masculine, 
keep in mind that the Divine Masculine, even if he's in a karmic relationship, is going through his own uh, steps of the journey and lessons, and as you are, but in a different way. But you have the power. You have the power to embrace whatever is in your life, focus on yourself, and again, being the best you that you can be. Work through any internal battles you may have. And I think even if you don't have contact with your, for both of you, if you don't have contact with your counterpart, the energies that you are sending, that you are feeling, are are almost being sent to the other counterpart. It's like, you know they say the twin connection? When pe kids are, people are twins, they can feel each other's energy or if they're hurt. Well, it's the same thing in a twin flame energy. So it's like you're almost twins. So what I'm hearing here is that you are both going through your own journeys. Um, the Divine Masculine is in a karmic relationship, from what I can see here. Um, it needs to cut that out. That's going to end. There's an ending here with the Queen of Swords. But with that ending comes some self-healing. And it's a slow process, but then a, finally a rebirth uh, with the Judgment card. And the hurt will be over. You'll heal from the hurt. And you can move forward with happiness, miracles, and um, moving forward in a positive way. And the same for you, Divine Feminine. Um, with the Nine of Wands, I hear, I hear a lot of power, uh, courage, and strength, which is what they were saying in the Power card. Um, so it's almost like you have power over your destiny in a way you can't control other people and you can't control what goes on in the flow of the universe but you can take steps to learn the lessons and be truthful to yourself work through those battles within and then eventually because um, you have um, the ace of wands which is the beginning and the nine of cups so where you're at right now appreciate wherever it is you're at and almost embrace the journey because it's teaching you both lessons that you wouldn't have ever learned if you hadn't come into this twin flame connection. That is what I have for you. I hope that helped you in some way. Um, if you're on a twin flame journey. And uh, we all have our own journeys. And we all have our own divine timing. Um, and our processes to go through. And uh, whether or not we got, become. Whether or not we come into union. Is yet to be seen. But in, we have lessons to learn in the process. And we can't force it any faster or any slower, depending on what it is. Um, just embrace it. Learn from those experiences and move forward. And find the good in wherever you're at in your life. Find the good there. And whatever may not be serving you, you know, whether it's toxic or bad energy, you need to eliminate that stuff. But those are, those, those are uh, lessons to be learned, so those have to happen regardless. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this helped you in some way. And then, um, I ask that you subscribe. Hit the bell button if you want more notifications. I do plan to do more Twin Flame readings. I do, I do Zodiac monthly readings right now. And I do daily readings. And occasionally I'll do a pick a card reading. Um, but I would uh, love for you please to subscribe and hit the bell button. So you can get notifications of when I do other videos. And hopefully some of those will resonate too. If not all of it, then parts of it. Um, like if you did like this, if it resonated and please comment and share. I would love to hear from you uh, about your twin flame journey or where you're at in your journey and, um, share with others. If you would, if they're on a twin flame journey, um, or let others know that I'm here, that I have messages to, to be delivered from spirit. All right. Thank you so much again. Happy Valentine's day and, uh, love and light to you all. And, uh, thank you again for tuning in and I hope you will return. Thank you so much. Love to you all.